Hello everyone, and in the, this video, I'm going to be talking about, again, the latest patch for Total War Rome Remastered that has uh, just been released on Steam. And, you know, its impact on the Rome Remastered modding landscape and the community. And, uh, you know, I felt like uh, I needed to get a discussion video like this out, a short one, uh, just to touch on, you know, the release, uh, the controversy, and, you know, how uh, Feral Interactive, the developer for Rome Remastered, has really re redeemed and uh, Rome Remastered and given us the game we wanted. So let's get into it. When uh, Total War Rome Remastered was first released, um, a lot of people were upset by the fact that it was not as moddable as they thought it was going to be. So a lot of people thought, oh, you know... Europa Barbarorum from day one is going to be able to port everything and more to uh, the remastered platform and uh, boom, everything is going to be great. Uh, all the mods will get ported uh, and then people will be able to enhance them uh, by lifting by uh, since the limits will be lifted. And uh, that's that. But that's not what happened. So everyone uh, knows that when Total War Rome Remastered first released, um, you know, there were a lot of crashes. People were not able to uh, create mods that were stable. Um, there were a few mods out there, Total Conquest, one of them. There were, um, but uh, it was not the vibrant modding scene that people were expecting from the start. Now, of course, if you look at the release of the original Realm Total War, um, it wasn't that different. So, you know, a lot of the major mods didn't get created until, you know, some time after the release of the original Rome Total War after a few patches had already come out. Um, and, you know, that's an important thing to keep in mind that these sorts of things take time. And now with the release of the latest patch for Total War Rome Remastered, I think Total War Rome Remastered is the game that we were looking for it to be uh, on release. And, you know, do I wish it had been released with this much modding capability or half as much modding capability as we have gotten in this patch. Yes, of course I do wish that, but with this patch, we have gotten more than I think anyone could have ever thought possible. So you have not only unlimited faction slots, but you also have unlimited religion slots unlimited culture slots, unlimited building slots, unlimited building item slots, unlimited um, regions, unlimited units. And those are already pretty amazing changes for the modding scene. But you also have unlimited major reforms, which is huge for histor feeling historical progression in mods um, during the campaign and for campaign immersion. There is also the ability to have religion, religious families, so that uh, religions in the same family cause less unrest to each other than religions in different families interacting with each other. And not only that, but uh, you can actually create new campaign AI combinations, right? So in the Desker Strat file, where all of these uh, campaign AI combinations are defined, like Comfortable Caesar or... Um, I don't know, Craftsman Smith or Religious uh, Genghis. Now, you can actually uh, create new combinations because there were a set limit of combinations. Now you can create new ones and uh, change the definitions. So you can actually uh, affect what types of units the campaign AI recruits more than you could before, much more than you could before. Um, you can also... They've unlocked the uh, some battle AI properties in regards to the battle AI for particular factions. So you can actually create a different set of battle AI for different factions. You can make the Mongols utilize their horse archers and infantry differently. You can have the European factions utilize heavy cavalry differently than other factions. Um, it's uh, You can have the Byzantines uh, utilize their... Um, 
they're spearmen differently. You can do so many things. It's just going to take time, some time before people can take advantage of all this. Now, now th there what do I want of, to say with this video? There are a lot of games that, um, you know, are in development for a while and then they release and, um, you know, the release doesn't go as planned. Now, um, not a lot of those are, are comparable to the Rome Remastered situation because on release, you know, it's not like this was a Sword of the Stars 2 situation. Everyone knows about Sword of the Stars 2, uh, which was a broken game, right? Essentially, the AI didn't work and it, it was never fully fixed, right? They, they worked hard on it, but it was clear that the game was rushed. It was never fully fixed. The AI still doesn't work that well. The systems are not as a user friendly as they should be but you know rome remastered was uh, a game that worked on release it's not like it didn't work and um it worked fine it was essentially a nicer version of rome total war that had um better graphics it ran much better on modern systems and it it had steam workshop uh, modding capabilities uh, but, you know, what were people looking for? They were looking for something with more modding capabilities, something with, you know, at the beginning, uh, it was hard for people to even um, edit units, let alone anything else. So I, I just wanted to make this video because, you know, I think Feral deserves some props for sticking with it. Um, working hard for several months to get us the <clears throat> the game that I think we wanted on release. And, you know, they have done more than that with this patch. So j please stay tuned. There's a lot of news to come. Uh, I already have a couple of videos uh, describing, um, you know, what this patch brings to the table in terms of the lifted limits. And I talked about the possibilities there. But in this video, I wanted to talk about how, you know, Feral has delivered on what we wanted. Now, uh, there are going to be some people who say they don't like the UI and things like that. But, you know, that, for me personally, that's not a huge deal. There are certain elements that are editable. Um, I have edited a few UI elements myself, and more can be done. I'm just not the person, the right guy to do that. I can barely change the color of an arrow from gold to silver. But um, in any case, yeah, I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to say in this video uh, right now. So yeah, if you like videos about the historical Total Wars and their mods, uh, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.